Okay. You can't really read the title, but this is called uh, Topologic Non-Manifold Topology for Architecture and Building Engineering. And uh, in, uh, we've just had, I've just presented uh, to the group here in Prague, and um, where I was explaining that one uh, role for mathematicians, and we also include building physicists and computer scientists, uh, is to take theoretical concepts and to make these accessible to a wider community of architectural users. And one way we can do that is to create computational tools which support new representations in architecture. So uh, one of those theoretical concepts that we've taken is the concept of non-manifold topology. And uh, so our aim is to, is to give this, make this new representation available, to give new insights to architecture, and hopefully uh, make some contribution to make uh, architectural decision making better informed. So the premise for this is that buildings are um, uh, enclosed and partitioned space and are built from assemblies of connected components. And many, the many different forms of spatial and material partition, partitioning connectment that's found within buildings can be represented by topology. So I don't know whether uh, the audience is familiar with the concept of BIM, but BIM is essentially a modeling technique that focuses on the representation of the physical building components. And what it can't really represent is the enclosure and partitioning of space. This is King's College Chapel in Cambridge. So what we want to do is to uh, look how we can uh, make a new representation of architecture that focuses on this concept of space. So here we have one, the building is one space here, another space there, different spaces. And also we want to look at the connectedness of the actual physical components. So our suggestion is the answer to this representation is topology. So we're looking at uh, topology um, from, uh, unfortunately the, the top left image is obscuring part of the slide, which says, you know, theoretical topology. And at the bottom, we've got this domain-specific architecture, engineering, construction. And we're actually somewhere in the middle. We're kind of creating some intermediate application constructs, classes, properties, and operations. And it, it, this is a very paradoxical experience because to the pure topologist, what we're doing may look very domain-specific, but to, to the architectural user, this most probably looks quite abstract. And, 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 and un unusual. So uh, we're in, in our work, we're trying to really keep these uh, distinctive categories. We're trying to keep the terminology completely separate so we don't mix up sort of architectural concepts with topological concepts. We're saying, how can we represent existing architecture? How can we think about uh, unbuilt architecture? And are there any important concepts uh, in architecture that are not addressed by conventional topology that should be represented? So we're going to give a very short overview of uh, topology, uh, talk about the difference between manifold and non-manifold topology, and how, the w how we can essentially use this to separate the world of architecture into an idealized or spatial model of an architecture and a material or physical model. So most probably you're all familiar with the concept of vertex, edge, wire, face, shell, and cell. Those are sort of standard topological uh, concepts, and we can define those, uh, and th they all have relationships. We use lower order topologies to build higher order topologies, and that's more or less uh, where uh, regular topology in architecture would stop. So, uh, who have a single vertex, two vertices, an edge, create a face, uh, define a wire, create a number of faces, create a shell, open shell. If we add the the sixth face, we get a closed volume cell, that's manifold because the cell defines a continuous boundary between the solid interior and the void outside. And we can, but if we go to uh, introduce an internal face, then the cell, it becomes a cell complex consisting of two cells and an edge is defined by, can be defined by more than two faces. So uh, the distinction between manifold and non-manifold is that one obeys the Euler characteristics and the other one doesn't, and that defines the number of vertices, edges, and faces. Uh, and so this is defined for a number of uh, regular polyhedra. And uh, if you were defining 
a something like a, an engine made out of solid components that would be a really useful uh, the manifold uh, topology would be really useful to define these closed volumes but if we're thinking about a building though that doesn't really work that's why we need you know manifold topology so we've added in a, uh, an idea called a cell complex which is a group of contiguous cells and also a concept called a cluster which is a grouping of any other kind of topology so we're looking at not just at cellular topology, but we're also looking at mixed dimensionality uh, topology. So uh, one of the ideas of using topology is to create different idealized representations of the building. So one would be a cluster representing mixed dimensionality topology, where we've got uh, faces representing slabs and edges re representing columns or beams. Um, the cell complex can represent the partitioning of spaces, which is really good for energy analysis. And then we can create wires, which are essentially diagra dia um, sorry, uh, dual graphs showing the connectedness of spaces. Um, so again, we're, we're a bit <laughs> here's an example of a mixed dimensionality topology model to represent a, a, a structure of a building. Uh, which actually implements uh, one of the examples in Bill Mitchell's and uh, Malcolm McCullough's uh, book on digital media of 1994. We've actually re recreated that as a standard test exercise. Then here's a cell complex, and we can use this in multiple ways. For example, we can show the connectedness of the centroids of the, um, uh, of the different cells or we can look at the connectedness of cells through either shared faces or external faces. And actually, this is exactly the data structure that we need for energy analysis. We need to know which walls or external surfaces are external to the building, which walls are shared uh, between rooms or spaces in the building. Um, so we can look at heat flows into the building or between different rooms in the building. So rather than building a complex, a BIM model, which goes down to the level of you know, columns and beams and walls and partitions, we only actually need this much lighter weight representation uh, to do energy analysis. Then we can look at paths through the buildings by looking at how, uh, so there are lots of rooms which are adjacent, but you can only go from one room to another through, for example, a doorway or up a stair uh, case or through a stairwell. So this is looking at the circulation analysis. So we've got the general concept of a cell, but we use it in two different ways, either as a space, which is filled with a void, or as a solid. And we, we've added in this concept of aperture because uh, we can have something like a window in a wall, but the window uh, shape does not share any vertex with the um, face defining the wall. So we have a, a context a system there to define that. And then we can do different material representations. So for example, we can have a vertex-based connector, an edge-based um, linear element like a column or beam, a face-based component like a floor, etc. So integrating this all together, we can take an idealized spatial model, we can decorate it with a material model, and we can end up with, if you like, a topologically integrated BIM model uh, where the connection of adjacent walls is not directly modeled, but because each of the walls or, or material components is based on a topology in the idealized model, which is connected. So we can take this building volume and look at it in terms of different components, like we've got uh, edge, vertex, and face-based components. And here's an example uh, from a previous paper, Topo Facades, which was in Fabricate 2014, where all the geometry of the skeletal members, how they come together at mitre joints or the bisectors of adjacent faces, has all been computed uh, by looking at by the topological relationships between the edges and the faces. So we've got this overall uh, system uh, uh, sort of classification of topological elements, an equivalent classification of uh, Boolean operations. Some operations are conventionally found in solid modelers uh, based on 
manifold topology. The other ones are the non-manifold or the non-regular operations. So to many conventional uh, uh, solid modeling uh, applications, non-manifold topology is an error condition. So we've, this, is, this research has been going on since uh, you know, for the last 20 years to look at the way we can uh, use topology to define uh, idealized models and then decorate them to create material models. And I just want to look at one example that we did in 2012 where we took a sort of, a, a sort of uh, simple building and a representation of something like a lift shaft or an atrium. And actually, we can pass this through the building, and you can see that different uh, co uh, columns and beams are c being created and or destroyed as we pass the things. It's rather like a sort of amoeba sort of swallowing something and spitting it out the other end. But that's not modeled by just putting an I beam on a particular edge. That's done computationally to, to, with rules to say, if you find this edge, then decorate it with this column, uh, this uh, physical component. Oops, sorry. So I think this raises some more general questions about how do new representations, uh, mathematical representations of architecture, uh, al uh, alter the way we might think about architecture and, and externalize our ideas. Um, so the architecture has always been thought of as spatial, but in reality, it's always been preoccupied with the design of the physical and material for uh, a building. And so spaces which should be the driver of the building often, uh, all too often become the consequence. How can we change this? Well, we think that topology, uh, which is an explicit representation of space, uh, can be harnessed to do this. And hopefully this use of technology illustrates a very constructive contribution that mathematics can make to architecture. So this project is a joint project between uh, the Bartlett School of Architecture, UCL, and Cardiff University. It's called Topologic. It's been funded by the Lieberhulme uh, Research um, Trust. And uh, this presentation is based on a paper that we previously gave at uh, Advances in Architectural Geometry in 2018. Thank you. <laughs>